with our focus from uh, City of Detroit, Wayne County, to Macomb County, and we're pleased to have the executive for Macomb County, Mark Hackle, Thanks, guys. here Thank with you. us. Great to have you back again. Thanks. Um, there's an election in Macomb County too, right? Yeah, well, for the county executive, it was uh, really there was no primary for myself, so I didn't have a primary. We'll have a contested race in the general. We'll see who the GOP candidate is, but there have been other races. Um, again, the uh, uh, race that's uh, out there for one of the House seats in Macomb County, uh, there's a primary and uh, two Republicans are squaring off, and that one has been a very interesting race. A lot of money spent on that one, and uh, boy, I think uh, candidates trying to determine who the real Republican is in that particular race. So it's either going to be uh, Stanley Grad or Pete Lacido, and uh, we'll wait and see how that turns out tonight and see what the, you know, the Democrats can do as far as the, uh, the general election versus one of those individuals. Yeah, uh, one of the things that's going to be watched closely in each county is the vote on SMART. And I know in the past Macomb County has been very supportive of transportation issues, but you've also been a very bread and butter county. And do you expect any kind of change when people feel as though, you know, I may just be taxed out a little bit? Well, Combe County, I think the residents realize the importance of that regional transit system we have. Smart, there has never been an opt-out in Macomb County. Every municipality has always been on board with that, so I'm very confident uh, that it's going to pass in Macomb County. Just from what I hear from people, uh, they're, they're interested in it and uh, the history of, you know, the voting in, in the Smart Village. Um, one of the other ones is uh, Proposal 1. Um, that one's going to be a 50-50. I'm not really sure where tough? that's going to go. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's uh, the messaging and people were concerned because they just didn't understand, you know, the way the commercials came out, this is too good to be true. You know, it's, it's, they were questioning why that is, and uh, even I got phone calls from it. So, where, where were one. you? Uh I had to work you with, individually on I, that. I worked with the municipal leaders on that to try to figure it out. I know it's a challenge. It's a bad tax. Let's face that, okay? There's some ch changes that need to, need to happen with our tax structure in the state to begin with, you know, whether it comes to roads, education. In this particular situation, I mean, it was an unfair tax to the small business, but, you know, when we're taking that away, we need to figure out how, how that impacts or how it's going to affect a lot of these municipalities. You look at Sterling Heights, they just had a, a millage vote for police and fire, and it passed. They just did it in Clinton Township. There's another millage vote up for Mount Clements, which is our county seat. We have our county has not had one municipality in Macomb County that's seen emergency matter, manager status. We're concerned that if that vote doesn't go through in the city of Mount Clemens, that could uh, could cause for them to be in a, an emergency manager situation. So we're very concerned about it and hopeful that uh, that vote passes. If not, uh, we're, we're going to be working with our officials in Mount Clemens to see what we can do for them. Yeah, and we're going to hear a little bit more later of uh, the largest city in your county, Warren. Uh, Mayor Fouts has been the most vocal opponent against Proposal 1. Yeah, and, I, and I think part of it is, yeah. you know, there's an authority that's going to be created, as I understand it. There's going to be a reallocation of, of tax dollars, right? And so, you know, are the local municipalities going to get what they, they got before? Are they going to be made whole? That's, I mean, well, they say yes, you know, they will. What's bothering a lot of people you know. is the stabilization and, and as opposed no question to a guarantee. A, you know, this yeah. promise. I mean, yeah. this is promise made going to be promise kept. And uh, I don't think any municipal leader really is that happy with Proposal 1. I mean, they realize it. They know it's a bad tax, but before it goes away, they want to figure out what's there to replenish it because they're in such dire straits, a lot of these communities right now. And uh, with that, uh, you know, being taken away, boy, that really is going to be a dramatic impact on a lot of those uh, communities. So they realize that it could have been forced, you know, with the current situation in Lansing right now. They came up with something that was a, a promise made, and uh, they said, you know what, if we could promise to do this, will you support it? And so they did. So if it doesn't pass, it's going to be interesting to see if they still force this issue uh, in lame duck. And if they do, I tell you, there are going to be a lot of municipal leaders that are going to be very upset uh, with Lansing if they decide to uh, still force this issue, um, you know, with that uh, personal property tax elimination and uh, not have the funding there to support their police and fire and uh, other services that are essential. Off. Uh, you pro I'm sorry, Dave. No, go ahead. Uh, you probably won't answer this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, whoever wins in Wayne County, you're going to have to do business with them as the county executive of Wayne. Uh, is there anyone in particular you rather do business with? Well, when you say I wouldn't uh, want to answer the question, I mean, I know every one of those individuals uh, on various levels, and, uh, you know, this low voter turnout, I think, is causing concern for for the others uh, as opposed to Bob Ficano. I think this is a, it favors Bob Ficano. I think it's an opportunity for him to get uh, his base out there. So, you know, how this turns out, I'm not certain, but Warren Evans and I have always had a great working relationship as sheriffs, uh, counterparts, and even when he was the chief of the city of Detroit. So hard for me not to get along with these individuals. And recently, uh, getting to know Bill Wild. I mean, he's a, he, he seems like a very stand-up guy, knowing how to run his own municipality, um, you know, I, I think he would make a great uh, county executive as well, and I would love to work with him uh, if, he was, uh, if he was elected. So 
I'll get along with any one of them. I'll engage with uh, any one of them as long as they're not uh, beholding to uh, uh, special interest or political interest. Their interest is trying to figure out how do we work together and grow the region. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the outcome of that race. Last thing would be, uh, you know, years into this now, your first term has counted. Has it, has it been what you thought it would be, as you hoped it would be? Have you been able to accomplish uh, things that you wanted to accomplish as uh, wait, as the Macomb County Executive. I really appreciate the question because uh, the challenge was moving on from something I actually adored and that was being the Sheriff of Macomb County, law enforcement 30 years, 10 years as Sheriff. Going into this was a huge challenge of trying to in implement an entirely new form of government. And there were a lot of challenges that we faced, but the reality was, okay, how do we fix the financial situation in the county? Because within two years, we would have ran out of money. We would have been in the same situation you see in Detroit or the potential situation that's looming in Wayne County. That didn't happen. We turned that around and now we're sitting on an $80 million surplus balanced budget four years straight. So the financial side of it, we've been able to be very impactful in working with the Board of Commissioners and making that change, but also really trying to figure out how do we fit within the region and what are our assets in Macomb County and promoting it. Talking about defense, automotive, advanced manufacturing, and when we talk about pure Michigan and the state of Michigan, nothing can be more pure than what we have with Lake St. Clair in our Blue Economy Initiative. So there's a lot that we've been able to do in that first four years. I've been very excited about it. First two years was kind of a drudgery, just getting through all the mundane, okay, how do we get people to accept this new form of government, those that are public officials. We had that new charter. We yeah. finally got through that and uh, I think we're seeing a lot more uh, uh, as far as uh, benefits to the charter and uh, better days ahead of us and we're excited. Yeah, excellent. So. Mark, thanks Heck. so much. Thanks guys. Great Appreciate to have it, you here. You Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Always good being with Appreciate you. The we'll look All forward right. to seeing you in November executive. as well. Thanks guys. Yeah, right. you bet. Mark Hackle, the uh, Macomb County Executive, uh, joining us here on our webcast on WXYZ.com uh, as well.